In this example, we're going to use the more circle to answer a few questions associated with stresses that act at a point, this point, in a soil profile where the vertical effective stress and the horizontal effective stress are not principal stresses. You can see that clearly here because the given vertical effective stress, 161 kPa, is acting, yes, on the horizontal plane, but on the horizontal plane, the shear stress that is acting is not zero, it is 40. Because it is not zero, then the vertical effective stress is not a principal stress. By the same token, the horizontal effective stress, 59, is not a principal stress. And the reason is that there is a 40 kPa tau acting on the vertical plane. So we are going to answer four questions here. I'm going to write them here to the side. The first question is, what is the major principal effective stress at the point? The second question, what is the minor principal effective stress at the point? The third, what is the magnitude of the maximum shear stress at the point? And the fourth, on what plane is the effective stress equal to 80% of the major principal effective stress? Of course, at the same point. Okay, so here's the point, and I've redrawn here the stresses that we know. The vertical effective stress is 161 kPa, and the tau on that plane, meaning the horizontal plane, is 40 kPa. On the vertical plane, we have the horizontal effective stress, which is 59, and we have a tau of 40, obviously, the same value as here, acting but uh, in the opposite direction, meaning this one is producing a counterclockwise torque, let's say, and this one is producing a clockwise torque. So that makes sense. Okay, we're going to say that clockwise is positive. Now, we know the stresses that are acting on the horizontal plane, and we know the stresses that are acting on the vertical plane. So we can draw the more circle. Okay? Before we do that, what we're going to do is redraw our point like this. We just make it bigger. Okay, so 161, 40, 40, and this is 59. So we have two coordinates. On the horizontal plane, 161,40. And on the vertical plane, 59,40. With these two coordinates right here, we can draw the more circle. So we first place two points, one for each coordinate, right? 161,40, that's this point. And down here we have 59, minus 40. Now, what you would do if you didn't have Excel, for example, which I used for this problem, you would basically draw a line from one point to the other you identify the crossing in the x-axis and then you open your compass so that one, the, the pointy end of it lies here and the pencil side lies there and then you rotate and draw your circle. Okay, but with Excel we are able to just simply draw a perfect circle or whatever, right? And it looks like that. So it's the same. These are the two points and this is uh, the two points with the circle drawn. Great. So let's now look at the questions. What is the magnitude, let's say, of the major principal effective stress? Well, the major principal effective stress magnitude or value is this right here. So you can read it, right? It's, this is 160, this is 170, so it's 175 kPa. Next question, what is the magnitude of the minor principal effective stress, sigma prime 3? Minor is down here. 
this is 50 so this is 45 or so kPa okay so 175 kPa 45 kPa what is the magnitude of the maximum shear stress okay maximum shear stress is the top or bottom of the circle right so what we do is very simply take a ruler and read the value which is about 65 let's say around 66 kPa down here if you were to do the same you would find negative 66 kPa okay it's the same tau same magnitude all right next let's write it here 66 kPa number four on what plane is the effective stress equal to 80 percent of the major principal effective stress okay to solve that problem we need to first find what's 80 percent of the major principal effective stress so the major principal effective stress is 175 we found that out before right and this effective stress that we want to find is 80 percent 0.8 of this 175 right this is 140 kPa so now we go to the more circle and find the point on the more circle that has a coordinate x coordinate of 140 so here's 140 So it's that point right there. It could also be this point down here. So we can choose one or the other. Let's just choose the positive one. Okay? Meaning the positive tau one. Just because we want to. There's no need to justify it. We just pick one of them. Okay. Remember, the question is, on what plane is this effective stress acting? This 140, comma, you know, some value here. But on what plane is this 140 acting that's that's given to us by this point so how do we find that out okay well first step is to draw a line from your initial point number one to your initial point number two meaning those two points that you used to draw the more circle now what we need to do is figure out how many degrees we have to rotate that initial line to get to the dashed line that I just drew here, which ends at this point. To measure this angle, we extend the lines and then use our protractor 25 degrees you can see it right there so this is a 25 degree rotation okay which is counterclockwise so I'm gonna write that over here I rotated the line let's call it of the more circle right what line again the one that is associated with our initial condition I rotated the line of the Mohr circle, that one, 25 degrees counterclockwise. And I did so to take this point, which has coordinates of 161,40, to this point, which has the x coordinate of 140, which is the effective stress in question. So, what does that mean? That means that we're going to take our initial element, which has the 161 on it, and we're going to rotate it in the same direction, that is counterclockwise, half of this value. Why half? Because remember that any rotation of a line in the Mohr circle translates to 
a rotation in the field of half of that. So we're going to rotate this element half of 25 counterclockwise, which is 12.5, right? Degrees. This is 12.5 degrees. And so our element is now looking like this. And so if there is 161 kPa acting on the horizontal plane, this one, then there is 140 kPa acting on this plane right here. And by geometry, that plane is oriented 12.5 degrees from the horizontal. So the answer is essentially this. The best way to do it is to repeat that drawing. So like that, that's the plane. Here's the point. We denote here the angle of orientation of the plane, 12.5 degrees. And this is 140 kPa. So this would be the answer. That's the plane in the field on which 140 kPa are acting. So if we go back to the initial drawing, and the 140 is acting normal to it like that 